Travel is expected to pick up for Christmas. This goes against the CDC recommendation. If people decide to travel, AAA put together a list of tips for you to stay safe as possible. Well, the best time of year is here, a time for giving. But this year, a local tradition called the Santa Express had to change their kid-friendly shopping experience. It's a weird world that we live in, but we're pretty proud of this pivot that we made and um, yeah. hopefully families are excited. Their pop-up shop is now online. How you can support next. And we're talking a warm morning temperatures in the mid 30s. I'll let you know how long yesterday's snow will last. Up with Crim begins now. Well, the Spokane City Council voted to purchase four Model Y Teslas for the police department. This morning, we asked you, how will you feel about seeing our men and women in blue riding in a Tesla? So this is what some of you had to say. Right now, 50.4% saying no, it's too expensive. Others, uh, my, uh, the second place looks like, actually it's a tie. Yes, good for the government, environment rather, and another 24% saying I don't care. So uh, weigh in on our Twitter page and let us know what you think. Yeah, I mean, if you want uh, your police officers to be driving an American car, it's a lot more American than a Charger. So maybe that's your takeaway here. That could, yeah, especially we, we, you know, we talked a little bit earlier this morning about the impact of the environment as well. We're talking thousands of dollars of savings that could potentially be on upkeep. I personally, I, I honestly, I'm one of those, I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting to see. I, I mean, it, it's always cost more to be an early adopter of any sort of technology. And I think electric cars are right in there with that. So it's expensive right now. But is it viable? Does it work? I think we kind of have to pay a little more to know if that when the price comes down to get in an electric car, if it even works as a police up. Uh, police car. Yeah. There we go. I guess it's more of a just wait and see situation. Yeah. yeah but can you imagine the bad guys getting to ride in the back of a Tesla? They're almost getting yeah. arrested <laughs> for it. <laughs> Ooh, get to ride Not in encouraging Tesla. that. We're not encouraging no. that. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, is that a 17 inch touchscreen up there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I think the Teslas remind me somewhat of a Batmobile with all of the technology. Maybe the police department will be able to incorporate some of their technology with that large screen. Maybe mm. make it easier for uh, them to interact with each other on the road or while they're out in the field. So yeah. maybe there's other things that go into riding a Tesla than just the electric um, component right. of it. So again, 50% are still saying. Yeah, You're right. <laughs> yeah, definitely not giving them away. And a lot of the gas spent on police cars is spent just sitting in one location. And so when you look at how long a Tesla battery lasts, if you're sitting in one location, running the heater on a cold day and the radio and all your little police accessories, guess how long that car will last? How long? Eight days. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. Amazing. Who knows? All right, well, let's do weather. Let's get you out the door. Let's let you know what's happening today. Temperatures this morning are above freezing. That's melting a lot of the snow that we are seeing. But if you're heading up and over some of those mountain passes, melting yesterday, cold temperatures in higher elevations overnight is leading to some very, very icy spots on those roads. So be ready for them. We're kissing that moisture goodbye. In fact, it's just cloud cover for now. But as we scoop through the day, we get our next push of moisture. This one comes with some warmer weather. And by this evening's commute, let's say you even try to sneak out of work a bit early. You're going to go maybe get some last minute gifts. Be ready for rain. Grab the umbrella, put on the raincoat, whatever it is you do. Just do it because it's going to be raining later on this evening and we're talking heavy rain by about 9 p.m. And then scattered showers stick around through the day tomorrow. So it is a soggy stretch for many of us, but temperatures stay mild. So if you don't like snow, if you like rain, this is a great forecast. If you want snow, unfortunately, try as I might. Joshua, I just can't find it in the forecast. Oh, well, you can keep trying. We appreciate your help anyways. Okay. Hey, 634 this morning. There's some good news on the vaccine front in the fight against the coronavirus. The FDA says Moderna's vaccine is highly effective. New data released confirms the vaccine is more than 94% effective in preventing COVID-19, and it appears to be on the same track for emergency use authorization that Pfizer received last week. Now, unlike the Pfizer vaccine, Moderna's can be stored at normal refrigerator temperatures 
for 30 days. That should help get the vaccine to more rural communities. Well, in their last meeting of 2020, the Spokane City Council officially approved the name change of Fort George Wright Drive. It will now be called Wistox Way. The name honors women warriors of then and now. The quest of removing Colonel George Wright's name from the road has been no easy task. There's been protest petitions and people using their voice to make a change. The Red Nation Student Organization at Spokane Falls Community College tried to make this happen back in the 90s. Less than 24 hours after Wistock's Way was made official, Spokane County Golf announced they would change one of their courses names to Latah Creek Golf Course. They say the decision was made after a very intentional process to consider historical and or cultural significance of a property. Dana Marie. Let's take a look at what's trending online right now. Of course, as Christmas and New Year's approaches, many more people are expected to travel despite what the CDC recommends not to this year. From December 23rd until January 3rd, millions of Americans are expected to travel this year, and that's according to numbers from AAA. This year, the AAA predicts 84.5 million Americans will travel for the holidays. That's 34 million fewer travelers nationally compared to last year, so we are significantly lower. That number includes 626,000 Washingtonians. AAA's Washington's public relations manager said, quote, while Thanksgiving is traditionally spent gathering with friends and family, the year-end holidays are when Americans often venture out for longer, more elaborate vacations. That will not be the case this year. Now, for those who make personal decisions to travel, it's important to understand the risks and take steps to protect yourself when traveling. So here's what you need to know before you go. So plan ahead. Check with state and local officials about restrictions at your travel destination. Now this also includes what is expected once you return home. Second, follow public health guidances. The CDC recommends a COVID-19 test three days before you travel and then three to five days after you travel. Plus, make sure to follow social distancing guidelines and wear a mask, of course. Third and final tip for you, verify before you go. Check with hotels and car rental companies to make sure they are open and learn what restrictions they have in place. Well, COVID-19 vaccines are being administered nationwide this week, including right here in Washington. It is progress. But the list of things that we don't know about the coronavirus pandemic continues to grow, and that includes when it actually began. This morning, our Verify team is looking into a claim that the virus was in the U.S. long before we first thought. The first case of COVID-19 is believed to have been found in China on November 17th of 2019. The first American with COVID-19 was diagnosed on January 20th in Washington state. But did it really take two months to reach our shores? And if not, how long had it been spreading in the U.S. and how many people got infected but didn't know what their illness was? One viewer was concerned about that when he asked me about a claim that 2% of blood donations in California from December 2019 tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies. Our source for this is the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases. It published a study this fall in which researchers looked at thousands of archived blood samples donated to the American Red Cross. They came from several states from December 2019 or the first half of January 2020, all before the first American case was diagnosed. The California donations were from the middle of December 2019. Of the 1,149 samples that were retested, 23 had COVID-19 antibodies, which is 2%. So we can verify the claim is true. Additionally, around 2% of the samples from Oregon and Washington taken from that same week also tested positive and more than 1% of the samples that were retested from the Midwest and Northeast during the first half of January also tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies. Overall, around 5% of Californians have tested positive during the pandemic. But if 2% already had it way back in December of 2019, the number of people who've actually been infected is likely much higher than we'll ever know. Still to come this morning, many of us have had to switch up our holiday traditions this year, and the Santa Express event is no exception.
I think it's super fun. Um, and it's given us such an insight into these kids' minds that we, like even in almost 30 years of doing this that I don't think we would have had before. We talked with the kid-friendly shopping experience that's raising money to help struggling families. And we're talking rain in the forecast today, tomorrow, Friday, and as we head into the weekend, I'll let you know how many soggy days you should prepare for.